hey, there's a new King Kong game coming out. Hey, let's go check it out. Oh, let's check the dislikes. Never mind. Hmm, let's check the comments. Hey, that reminds me, there was an old King Kong game, and it did come out on the PlayStation 2. And I remember it being very good. Actually, I think it's the only King Kong game, but it did come out a long time ago. But hey, it still probably holds up till this day. I'll probably give it a retry. But before we get into the game, let's briefly talk about the history of the game. The game was released in 2005 on November 17, and it was a movie tie-in game. It was for the Peter Jackson King Kong remake, which will come out four weeks later, which is really weird considering the game was released four weeks before the movie was released, because movie tie-in games are usually released on the day of the movie or the next week after the movie was released. Then again, I think everyone knows how King Kong ends, so there's not really much of a spoiler, but I don't know. There's probably still people who haven't seen the King Kong movie, so if you're watching this video, there's a spoiler alert for any King Kong related media. So back in the day, movie tie-in games were super popular, but today they are mostly a dead genre. Some are just mobile games or some are just not made at all. Now this will surprise you because the game developer was Ubisoft. Yes, the same company that will remove your games because you didn't log in for six months made this game. But then again, Ubisoft around this era did make a lot of good games, so there's not really much of a worry. King Kong was released for the Xbox, PlayStation 2, and the PC, and later we'll get a graphical update for the Xbox 360. But for this video, I'll be playing on the PlayStation 2 emulator because I tried to play on the PC version and it was broken. Some of the scripted events would glitch out. You would get hit and the game would just melt and you would just be blind for the entire time. Weird stuttering, a lot of textures would stretch out or not be colored in at all. So if you want to play this game, I highly recommend getting a PlayStation 2 emulator to play it. So anyways, I played this game a lot as a kid and had a lot of fun playing it. It was one of my favorite monster games to play and I remember it looking very good. But since it's an old game, I'm probably looking through it with rose tinted glasses. But hey, that's why I'm replaying it to see if it still holds up. So let's see the game. Now, I gotta say, this main menu is one of the greatest main menu I've ever seen. Seeing the Ventoro ship struggling against the waves and the storm, and the music that goes with it is just amazing. It signifies how dangerous this island is, and that we're exploring into the unknown. Also, it's using the in-game engine to render it, so we're seeing the game's engine capabilities. Now, for some people born in the 2010s, you might find this weird, because in order to save your games, you need the memory card. Not like today, which you could save on a hard drive or in the cloud. And if you didn't have your memory card, you had to restart from the beginning of every game. And still to this day, I've kept my memory card, which holds up to 8 megabytes. It might seem small, but these things could hold a lot of save games. So if you lost your memory card, just say goodbye to those saves because there is no way of recovering those saves unless you refound your memory card. Also, you didn't have to wait for a game to install. It was just on the disc. Man, the old days of gaming in which you didn't need to worry about a game taking half your storage or waiting for a game to update. These had day one patch, which would take the whole day updating. Man, these were good days. But anyways, back to the game. So for the rest of the game, I'll be playing a 4 by 3 A spec ratio without the black bars. There's another option in which you could have the black bars for more cinematic feel or you can play in 16 by 9 it's just widescreen so there's not really much of a difference so when you first start the campaign it gives you a montage of the beginning parts of the movie i will say that this was a good decision because in the movie it takes a long time to get to the island it takes 50 minutes of the movie's runtime just to get to the island so at least we didn't have to wait for that for the game you get to play two characters you can play as jack driscoll or you can play as king kong now these characters have their own unique level sections, but first we're going to talk about Drag Driscoll because most of the game's runtime is mostly playing as him. Now for some people you may not like this because for both characters UI it is very immersive which means there is no health bar, no ammo count, or no indicator where to go. But you don't have to worry about that because this game is mostly linear. But for health you don't have to worry about it since you have Call of Duty healing. If you get hit once your screen just turns red and if you hide away it will just turn back to normal. But for ammo Jack just yells out how many magazines he has left or how many bullets he has. So this may anger some some people who know about guns because he calls shotgun shells magazines and the same goes for the bolt action rifle. But he uses the right terminology for the pistol and the Tommy gun. Even later on the game you have Hayes get mad at you for counting out loud which is funny because throughout the game you're just yelling out how, how much ammo you have. But what's also most surprising is that all of the actors from the movie reprise the roles for the game. Most of the time movie actors don't reprise the roles for tie-in games, they just move it to another voice actor or they just kill off the character in the game. So at least we get to hear some of the characters like Jack's black character. A big aspect of this game is that you feel like you're on Skull Island with the dense rainforest, the caves, and the sky bumps. But another big factor that adds on that you're on this island is the animals. Every animal on this Over island there. is just a steroid Hunter. version of itself. Like with the giant centipedes, oh. the giant bats, giant scorpions, giant leeches, and giant piranhas. Also, let's not forget about the dinosaurs, which add more to this island. Just like the movies, it feels like it's stuck in the past, and it also shows humans couldn't survive in these environments. Another detail that shows that you're on Skull Island is that every animal is hyper-aggressive and will eat anything that you kill. They won't even pay attention 
attention to you after you kill an animal. They're so hyper fixated on eating. Even with limited gaming technology, it adds so much to the environment showing how the animals live. This reminds me of how Monster Hunter World environment feels like. Because in the game we see a simulated ecosystem, but this is with modern gaming technology. Just imagine an open world Skull Island game. It would be amazing. Even though the graphics show their age, it still looks good even to this day. They put so much care and detail into this and this was just a movie tie-in game. Not like today when many games developers just rush into development. So for Jack's section of the game, it is more of a survival feel. You have to conserve your ammo or you can use spears to fight against the animals. This means you can only have one gun in your hands or you can turn on the inventory in the options menu but I think that just kills the aspect of the game. In certain parts of the level you have to use bait to cross certain paths and you can use it to distract the animals. You can even get to hide away from the animals but there are some animals you can't hide away from like the centipede which will crawl through the cracks and will try to bite you and another animal which I'll mention later. Most of the best parts of Jack's campaign is when you're by yourself because in some levels you have to worry about Anne, Carl, Hayes and Jimmy because if you let them get killed you get to restart from a checkpoint but at least they get to fight back. They can throw spears at the animals and they even get to use guns to help you out. Even though it's annoying sometimes they keep yelling out your name whenever they're attacked and whenever you're talking to them. They use a lot of reused voice lines but I don't mind it because I'm pretty sure they're on a tight budget and had a tight schedule of whenever to release the game. Also, I like the in-game explanation for getting guns. Captain Inglehorn just uses his seaplane to deliver crates. In the movie, he doesn't have a seaplane. The crew just gets the weapons from the ship and that was it. Now, two of my favorite sections from Jack's campaign is the V-Rex chase. At first, it starts with a short buildup of revealing the V-Rex when you hear its roar. Then, in the next level, the V-Rex comes out of the jungle and attacks some of the expedition members. And the best thing you can do is just run away, because nothing can hurt it. You can try to shoot at it, which will just roar at you, and it will forever continue to pursue on you. You can't even hide, because the V-Rex will just destroy the hiding spot. These chases add on to the terrifying factor, because the best thing you can do is just distract it, and it shows that we're not supposed to be on this island. Even in some parts of the game, you have to wait for Kong to help you out, since he is the only one to kill them. Another section I like from this game is the stampede level. For this level you have to light some of the brazers so you can get to the next level. But first, the brazers are at the end of the level. So you have to worry about the Brachiosaurus stampede and some of the Ventorosaurus attacking you. And that's not all. Because in the end, you have to worry about the V-Rex since it killed one of the Brachiosaurus and makes the stampede even crazier. But you still make it out in the end. Another part that interests me was that some of the natives attack you when you're on the raft section. Because in the movie, the natives are just at the beginning of when the movie crew enter the island. And they're never ever seen again. This game, they're deep in the jungle and they're actually trying to kill you. Even a small detail that I didn't even notice when I was a kid is that there's small dismemberment. When you use the shotgun against the crabs, their limbs tear off. Another part that I liked was that when you enter a new level, it plays a cutscene and shows on the map that will where you're going. But a big missed opportunity for this game was the cave scene. Because in the movie, when Kong knocks everyone down off the bridge, it plays one of the most badass scenes from the movie whenever they're fighting against the bugs. In the game, the same thing happens, but you just fall into the cavern and nothing comes out and attacks you. It would have been very cool if they made a section where you just survive against the bugs and try to wait for I'm help. Now for King Kong's section, these levels are one of my favorites except for the last one, but I'll talk about that later. These levels make you feel like you're King Kong. When you move around, there's things that break around you. You could pick up the animals and throw them around, or you can just bite their heads off. And you can make Kong pound his chest to go into rage mode. You can even climb across the jungle walls and swing from tree to tree. When playing as Kong, it makes you feel like you're king of this island. But a big highlight about Kong is that you can fight against the V-Rex, and you can perform finishing moves on them. Even though there's only two moves, you can still perform the most famous one that Kong does. Even at certain points, you have the Skull Island natives attack you, which is surprising because I thought the natives were respecting Kong. But at some points, the camera angle switches from a fixed camera to a third person camera without warning, which can be a little confusing for some people because it even changes the controls for a little bit. Even though these levels are pretty short, they're still a lot of fun. But the last level as you play is kind of disappointing. Even though it's New York, there's really not much stuff to do. You can fight against the military and the cops, but it's very linear. I wish it was just a little bit open world, and the city doesn't feel like it's alive. In the end, you climb on top of the Empire State Building and fight against the planes, but in the end, Kong doesn't win and gets shot down and falls to his death.
Their planes got him. It wasn't the airplanes. It was Beauty Kill the Beast. For being a movie tie-in game, it's really good. And this was made by Ubisoft, which is surprising. It seems like Ubisoft put a lot of work, thought, and care into this game. Unlike today, which Ubisoft has been not doing too well. With them trying to make Skull and Bones, which has been development hell for a very long time. And trying to remaster Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Overall, the game's total playtime is 4 hours. It's really not that long, but I highly recommend playing this game, either through an emulator or finding an old game copy. Because I think this is one of the best movie tie-in games of all time. And you should really try it out. But before we end this video, let's talk about the bonus features. You can look at the movie concept art, you can look even at some of the 3D models from the game. Also, you can unlock special filters, which you can have an old movie filter or a high contrast filter. I can't show you them right now because there's a bug on my emulator which causes them to glitch out the whole screen. But one of the best bonus features is that there's an alternate ending. You can control a plane that has Jack Driscoll and Captain Inglehorn and shoot down the other planes that are trying to kill Kong. So Kong can finally have a happy ending since at the end of it, he returns back to Skull Island. But I'm gonna have to kill the happy ending because in the movie lore, they say that the island sinks in 10 years, so it's kind of a happy ending for Kong. With a new King Kong game that's coming out and people comparing it to Gollum, it seems like they should have just remastered or remaked the 2005 version. A remake or remastered of this game would look amazing. Seeing how far gaming technology has advanced since 2005 would be an amazing game, but That'll probably not happen because of licensing issues and people not interested in a King Kong game. All we can do is I hope that people get more attention to this game so now we could have a remastered or a remake of this game. As of right now, we're gonna have to make do with this game. The combat looks fun, but the graphics looks not so good. It's not right to judge a game based on its graphics. I mean, there's some people who refuse to play Minecraft because it has bad graphics, so let's not quickly judge how bad this game could be. But I will do a review on the new King Kong game when it releases to see if it's bad or if it might be even better than this one. We're gonna have to wait and see. And hey, this is the first Monster vs first video game unlike the casino game so it's probably a good head start for a resurgence of monster games or it could be a very bad start but hey if you like this video leave a like comment and subscribe if you want more content like this and i hope you guys have a great day this is mazer signing off